Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. The purpose of this video is to directly refute using actual calculations, in other words, math, and not words to disprove the following specific statements of misinformation being stated by Trudeau and Morneau on these tax changes. The specific statements are, first, we are doing this to level the playing field, or close loopholes as they put it. Small businesses earning income through a corporation can benefit from that employees can. They are protecting the middle class. The second statement, existing businesses making 73000 or less will not feel any impact. And I will work it out on multiple income levels. And finally, someone making two hundred fifty k per year will pay less tax than an employee making 50000 This comparison only contemplates the, the dividend sprinkling uh, rules they speak of. And I will try to do a similar video on the other proposals in due course. But these videos are draining, necessary but draining. I'd welcome help from any of my colleagues uh, on these other proposals. So before I start, first let's agree that in order to do a fair comparison of folks earning income through a corporation versus someone earning income from employment, that we need to do an apples to apples calculation. Agreed? For example, a self-employed person operating their business through a private corporation is not in the same economic position as an employee making exactly the same base salary. So for example, the self-employed person has no vacation benefits, sick day benefits, uh, stat holidays, etc., etc. So I chose the most basic scenario of employee. I didn't put any pension in just to be conservative. And here's the benefits I added to their base salary, which will total about 12% uh, of additional non-cash benefits. Here they are. That's. So my process, I calculated the taxes for both corporate earners and employees at the following levels, 50, 73, 150, 250, 300, all income levels peppered in speech heard from uh, Trudeau and Morneau. Uh, it wouldn't be rational at the levels we are talking about for smaller business owners to salary out the corporate earnings because it would end up costing all around more tax to the individual. You can't look at the corporate taxes and the personal taxes in a vacuum or, you, or your analysis is wrong. This may be what happened with our friends in Ottawa. I don't know. It's assumed all expenses have been deducted against corporate income. So these comparisons are based on a married or common law couple with one working and not one non-working spouse. Also, it's based in Nova Scotia. Numbers will vary from province to province. So again, I encourage my colleagues across the country to do the same exercise and provide this info to your public. So the first statement, we are doing this to level the playing field or close loopholes as they put it. Small businesses earning income through a corporation can benefit from that employees can't. We are protecting the middle class. So here was my process. I compared the tax liability between the two groups each under the current regime and the proposed tax regime. Under the current tax regime, the small business owner has the ability to split or spread income over her spouse's tax bracket. So when I calculated the tax liability for the corporate small business owner, I took the total of the family's tax bill. And when I did this, under the current regime, the employee with her non-cash benefits fares better at every income level calculated. And here's how much. Now, at first glance, yes, there would be a tax savings for the corporate small business owner if we're comparing apples and oranges, but you must make an economic comparison by comparing apples and apples. Okay. And that is what the Department of Finance has failed to contemplate. Obviously, under the new regime, this gap even gets bigger. So the conclusion, trying to create fairness is being blamed, but there is not a fairness issue. It's qu quite the reverse, actually. So while the government says that they are trying to level the playing field, this is mathematically not their motive unless they've gotten their math wrong. Why incorporate then? Well, just stay tuned. I'll address that in a bit. But it does beg the question that if all things are equal, or, or in, the, in this case, as I just proved, not equal, why would we mess around with entrepreneurial spirit? Knowing employees are not only getting not getting gypped, but also far better when comparing apples to apples. I would imagine even employees would not care if we kept things the same. Protecting the middle class is just rhetoric, which isn't supported by any calculations that I've just done here. So the second statement, this won't affect corporate small business owners making under 73000 a year. I've also heard 50000 and I've heard 150000 So I just went ahead and calculated each of these levels. So I calculated the total taxes for the corporate small business owner under the old regime and the new regime, and I took the difference. It's not a hard calculation. And here's what it will cost everyone at each of their respective levels. 
So the conclusion then is when Trudeau and Morneau say that this is not costing corporate small business owners with incomes under 50K or 70K or 150K, this is just not true. A note though, remember, I am calculating this in Nova Scotia and possibly in other provinces there will be little effect on the 50,000 level. Uh, Nova Scotia is heavily taxed after all, but this is definitely going to cost you know folks at 73 and the above level. So. so the third statement, which I think is the funniest, is a corporate small business owner making 250000 per year can pay less taxes than an employee making 50000 The corporate small business owner making 250000 per year will pay combined individual and corporate taxes of $81,557. That's an effective tax rate of 32.6%. An employee making $50,000 per year will pay $7,335, an effective rate of 15%. So conclusion, on what planet is $81,000 or 35% less than $7,000 or 15%? Now I would really like to see more and I'll back this one up with math. Why do people incorporate their businesses then? So there's a very good reason. Having the capital within the corporation rather than personally creates flexibility for the small business owner. If everything runs hunky-dory for the small business owner, which is seldom the case, they can invest corporately what they don't need to live for retirement. But in the event they require capital to either get through some hard times or draw on to take advantage of opportunities to grow the business, they can have the flexibility, which frankly is needed to run a business. There's no hanky-panky going on there. So why not withdraw and use RSPs instead? as the government has, has suggested, because it doesn't offer the same kind of flexibility for the small business owner to draw on. It ties up that capital. And truly, if this is what they are suggesting, like why? Because finance would be no further ahead because the tax they would have grabbed on the withdrawal from the corporation would be saved by the taxpayer on the contribution to the RSP. Again, why? It just slows down the wheels of business and growth. Why would our government want to do that? Small businesses invest capital, services, they create employment, they innovate. Why? Confused as to why the corporate small business owner can sprinkle income to their adult children to help them get through university? There's no hanky-panky here either. The corporate small business owner is mimicking the RESP system used mo you know, mostly by employees to fund their children's university. Remember, the RESP investor gets both a government grant and tax-free growth. That is exactly what is happening in a corporate scenario. No one, not the middle class, not employees, no one is getting gypped here. There's no hanky-panky. Just another way for the corporate small business owner to maintain flexibility needed to run a small business. So does anyone really work the system to bend it, to make it work in their favor? Of course. The ultra-rich who can afford the legal and specialty tax services to find the real loopholes. And there are loopholes if you have enough money to have it make sense. The true 1%, not the people that this proposed legislation is targeting. And I bet Morneau knows a thing or two about loopholes from personal experience. But closing the stock option loophole would far better serve the Canadian people instead of threatening our jobs, economy, and health care by forcing doctors out of our country. And on the subject of doctors, if you have head trash around the fact that doctors make good money, smarten up. Doctors invest nine years of their lives in schooling and rack up copious amounts of debt. They deserve to recoup that and earn a good living. And I'll tell you, when I have to go under the knife, I'm pretty darn thankful I have a good doctor and I darn well hope he makes a shitload more money than me. So, keep the comments coming. I'll try to address these as much as possible. Remember, I am a small business owner in addition to the 60 plus hours I put into business every week. I'm fighting this tooth and nail, making these videos, talking to anyone who will listen, letting the general population, population know that we are being treated like lambs to the slaughter here. Morno and Trudeau are using words to confuse you. Ask for the math. This is very serious stuff and all the lovely words in the world should not satisfy you that they have your best interests at heart. The people that wrote these proposals are academics and economists. I am in the trenches every day, as are my colleagues. I live in the same world most of you watching this do. I'm not a rich person. I'm not married to a rich person whose name can be found on the bag of french fries in my freezer. Ask your MT to demand the math from their colleagues and then do what is right to represent you passionately and with bias. There's too much at stake here. There's only a few left, weeks left to go before October 2nd, so go call now. You have to fight for democracy. As of this, mo this morning, we have seven courageous MPs across the country who have joined this fight. 
So we're making headway. Okay, thank you.